Ah. Oh. Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, Shins of Seneca. How are you guys doing? Um, thanks for joining this chemistry GCSE night before hyper stream. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. You know, I'm buzzing, and the chemical ones, the chemistry ones, are really special because I think our first ever live stream was um, GCSE chemistry. Turn off your volume. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you guys have been on it with your requests. So thank you so much for getting this in. Um, people have been asking a lot about practicals. So the plan for today, I'm going to talk over the six marker practical questions. Um, and some, give you some tips on how to structure those answers. Um, then we're gonna go over some rates questions and the Haber process came up quite a lot as requested. Um, that was bad grammar, but this isn't the English language live stream, so I don't know. Thank mind. goodness. Thank goodness, well, that one be, is uh, done, done, done. Um, Then, you lucky things, we're gonna do a predictive question for chromatography, talk over a few tips and tricks for that. Um, and then to finish, um, there's gonna be, we're gonna do a hyper blitz of all the different questions from all the different topics that you can expect to see tomorrow. So it's gonna be wild. There's gonna be lots of gong action because there's gonna be loads of questions and opportunities for you to answer. Um, keep your questions coming in as well on the uh, cute little uh, stream. The also, gong is here. Guys, the gong is here, don't worry. It's here, it's here. The also, guys, it's so close to the end. So close! So close. Oh so my close. God. Is there a song about so close? They're so close to you right now. so close to you right now. There is. It's a song. Course. Okay. So we should so we should do a music one of these. We should, we should. Okay, so um let's dive in before we so let's get going and talk about that six marker question. Also, if you find these videos useful, um please subscribe and put, like, give us a thumbs up um so we can keep doing these. And um, get your mates to come along as well. Yeah, because exactly. we, we really enjoy doing them, but we need to get as many people. As possible we do. to make sure we can carry on. Yeah, to keep on doing. And we need, we need. So it's great to see, like you know, the lots of familiar names on there, which is really great. But yes. let's let's get as many people here as possible. Exactly. Um. So, um, the six marker question. Now, this is a relatively new addition to the chemistry specification. So there's a bit of like confusion about how to best answer them. Now, they're leveled marks. Now, what does that mean? In the old syllabus, it would literally be you would have to make six points to get six marks, and that's not how these ones work. Um, the examiner will mark the question um, using a leveling system, and there's level one, two, and three. Now, to get into level three, which is five to six marks, you have to give a detailed description of nearly all the stages of the experiment, because the question is going to ask you something like, describe an experiment to prepare, or like, devise an investigation, or like, <laughs> describe how you could use X and Y to show, something like that. They won't ask as fun as I ask questions. I should be an examiner. I would you like such say, funny yeah. questions. So to get that five, six marks, you need to give a detailed description of nearly all stages, um, write clearly and coherently, and use a range of scientific terminology accurately. So don't use words like stuff. Use like reactants. Use words like um, mix, or don't put like throw together or whatever. Think about like a recipe. So an example of this would be like, if you were, if you were at like level one, Obviously, yeah. you, you'd develop your answer a lot more than I'm about to say, but level one would be something like mix the two reactants, right? Yeah. Really basic, you get one to two marks for that sort of thing, along with you, the other stuff you say. Level two is if you say, like, mix the reactants together in a beaker, you're given a bit more information about mixing the reactants, where are you going to mm -hmm. mix them? Mm -hmm. If you want to get that level three, you're looking for parts of your answer to have things like mix solutions of the reactants together in a beaker. So being really specific about what type of reactants they are, yeah. as well as, like, yeah, just going into as much detail as possible basically to get that level three. Yeah, perfect. And a really good way to make sure you're including everything you need to get that six marks is to use the use the acronym SET. Okay. So what does SET stand for? Well, S is step. So that's the um describe what you need to be done in the stage. So what do you need to do in step one? Um so in chromatography, it could be like draw the um, draw the line um, on the chromatography paper and submerge it in the solvent. We're going over chromatography later, so that's a little bit of a little bit of a sneak peek. You're welcome. E is for equipment, so you have to say the equipment you're going to use. It's in a beaker. Um, that's where we're mixing those solutions. If you're doing a titration, you need to have a burette, that kind of stuff. And then T is terminology, so make sure you use appropriate terminology. Now, if you use that set acronym, you're going straight into that level three band. You are getting your five to six marks, and you are on your way. What was the acronym? Set. What was the acronym? Set. What was the acronym? Game, set, match. Game, set, set and match. Step, oh, equipment, bam. terminology. Bam. Amazing. Set, equipment, terminology. Include those three things. That is what you need to get your five to six marks. So I um, hope that was useful. That was a quick run through, and we'll go through some 
um, experimental questions throughout this episode. We've had lots of requests for things like experiments and stuff. I can see lots of people before we started were still yeah. going that, so we're definitely going to cover some of that. Yeah, that definitely. Stuff as well. um, we are, we'll st should we? Why don't we start with an experiment question? Why don't we start with a? Um, a, a chromatography question. That How sounds like a good idea. That sounds like a good idea. So I'm just going to share my screen. Anyone watching this back later, speed us up. Speed us up. Make us go fast. And remember that set acronym. That's probably the most um, useful thing we've talked about so far. Oh, John, no, stop that. that. No, no, stop. No, stop. Press stop. stop. Okay. Press stop. Having some technical here, difficulties. Just like the application, application window. window. That's it. This one here. Uh, that was a lot. That was, that was lot. luck. That was that was that was, that was trippy. That, that was, was chemistry. That was, that was chemistry. <laughs> so okay, what are we gonna do? Look how large our faces are. <laughs> Hi. So we're gonna go over one of the um, predicted questions that we've um, had at Seneca, and they're all written by examiners. Um, so let's dive into this chromatography predicted question. So Carly Rae Jepsen, she has a number, maybe you'll get it, is investigating closed dyes by separating them using some paper chromatography. So she places four dots of different dyes on the chromatographer paper and this is displayed in the diagram. Okay, so that is the experimental setup for chromatography. Now, three techniques Carly Rae needs to consider to ensure she obtains accurate results from her investigation. So, what are three things that Carly Rae needs to do? Let's get your answers in on the live chat. We want to see lots of gong action going on today. So, get get those answers in. Yeah. So, what do we need? So, the, what needs to be at the line of the dot? That's a lot of gaps. That's, That's a, lot a lot of gaps. Of gaps. I think I'll give Should you just go with it. So, the solvent needs to be below the line, the line dots of the die. So, the solvent that is the mobile phase. It needs to be below the dots. Okay. And the baseline, we have to draw that in pencil. If you draw it in pen, pen has ink in. The solvent will cause the ink to separate out too. So we draw that baseline in pencil and we make sure the solvent is below the lines of the dots, okay? And this is drawn on filter paper. And the dye has to be soluble in the solvent, okay? Because that's what's going to separate out the different dyes. I'm seeing so many good answers. Henry James, you're absolutely nailing it. Amazing, Jessica amazing. Richardson, Hugo Thomas, obviously. Yes, yes, man. Yes, uh, love that. Loving it, guys. Get the gong, get the gong. Found the gong. The gong. Love gone him. gang gone gang so that's the important steps to remember for chromatography now so any chromatography question you're going to be presented something like this and you're going to have your first thing you're going to think is like oh i'm probably going to have to calculate some rf values so the chromatography investigation produces this result and they've left out um die three from the diagram so die four has moved eight centimeters and the solvent moved 9.2 centimeters so again you want to be thinking i'm going to have to calculate some rf values here. Now it's important to say that in the exam you probably won't be given these measurements. You yes. might be asked just calculate the RF value and you'll actually need to do the measurement yourself with a ruler so make sure yes. you have a good ruler with you tomorrow as well. Exactly. Make sure that is taken into the exam. So what do we need to do to calculate the RF of die four? Which way round are the number? Oh Jaden is straight in there. Jaden. Gone. Boom boom boom. But I think there were even people before that. I was just Fee, uh, I saw. FIFA Nimrod. Amazing. Amazing. Smashing it. So Loving it. So you always do the distance, move, uh, to, you do eight divided by nine two, so it's the distance moved by the substance divided by the one, the movement by the solvent. So the solvent moved 9.2, so you do eight divided by 9.2. Now that gives us the RF value. <laughs> now, uh, the student calculated the RF value to be 0.2, so work out how far it moved into one decimal place. So now we've got to subvert that equation, we're going to do it backwards. the other way round. Okay. So what calculation are we going to need to do? Shout it out into the chat, and then we will gong whoever gets the right answer first. I'm excited. Oh, bam! Josh bam. Smith, you uh, are smashing it. 2.0 centimeters of love. Gong, 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 gong. Really gong. good exam tip. Even when it says one decimal, one um, decimal point, even if it's zero, you have to put that point zero to get the mark. You will not get the mark for two centimeters. Okay? So RF is distance uh, the dyes uh, the dyes travel divided by yep. the distance that the solvents travel. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. So. Um, why do some dyes have multiple spots on the chromatography paper? What is this? There's a key word I want to be seeing in the chat that begins with an I. Um, why do some of the dyes have multiple spots on the chromatography paper? Um, yeah, impurity, amazing, amazing. So the solvent moves through the paper and different dyes have different solubilities and carry different distances by the 
um, solvent, and if the substance is impure, it will be made up of different substances. Amazing. I'm going to give you a gong for that. Thank you. Thank you. It begins with an I. <laughs> Love it. So, not gong. Not gong. Impurity. Impurity. Look, look at these amazing answers. Oh, Holly guys, Smith, Megan Green, Dylan, you're all loving it. I am so impressed. It is warming my chilly little heart to see you guys doing so well. So each of the substances will have a different R F value, so will travel a different distance up the chromatography of the paper. So uh, one thing I want to say about chromatography, a lot of the time what you do is you have the RF value of your unknown sample and you compare that to the RF value of a known substance, okay? And that can give you a clue as the identity of the compound. But this is such a common mistake that's made in exams. You can't say that a substance is definitely um, a substance if they have, this, if they have the, the same, same if the RF, RF value. Is the same. It might just have the same RF value. Exactly. But the way you can also, another way to like test that something is maybe the same substance, they might ask you like, how can you uh, further show that maybe it's the same substance? Yeah. If you tested it with a different solvent, Amazing. And again, if you had a different RF, if you had the same RF value okay. with a different solvent, that's going to increase how like it is this the oh, same substance. I'm going to give you a gong for that. That was amazing. Boom, boom, boom. Well done, Richard. Good Thanks. tip. So RF values just provide evidence that substances are the same. They don't prove the substances are the same. Okay. So that was a quick run through a chromatography exam question. Now rates was also super requested. So we're going to go over some ticks. Tips and tricks to rates and talk about Le Chatelier's principle as well. What so a legend. Le what, oh my god, is. icon, like groundbreaking, revolutionary, <laughs> will never be the same again. We love Le Chatelier. Let us know if you like Le Chatelier. Le Chatelier gang. No, that doesn't work. The, 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 the Le Chatelier, Le Chatelier gong gang. So, we're also, we had some requests for the Hamer process. So, we are mixing those together in one like bumper. Super nitrogen, hydrogen, Hamer thing. process. Love that. It. So, which one of these is the balanced equation? Is it one, two, or three? Shout out on the chat, and um, maybe there'll be a little fan for. Oh, that, that was such a good shout. Yeah. Shout. <laughs> <laughs> shout. It was such a good shout. Uh, no one heard, right? Uh, hi. Mm -hmm. Okay, really good. So it Lots of people shout out. Three. three. Really Excellent. good job. A really good job. Um, so, which of the following is the cap required in the Harvard process? I asked this on Instagram Again, earlier, so everyone you should is know loving. This. Gong. Gong, 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 gong. Um, really good job. What is the catalyst? Um, Let's see if we can yep, get that catalyst. Iron, oh, yeah, nailing yeah. it. Gong, 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 gong. Iron catalyst, amazing. Look how happy Christina is, it's because Brittany's not there. So, nitrogen and hydrogen reactive on the Hamer process. Again, I know this is going to happen. This equation comes up again. I'm not going to make you um, do it again. I think it is, which one is it? Top one. Top one. So, um, so Tiger. Woods wants to replicate the experiment, but he struggles to get the reaction to start. Poor Tiger, Poor Tiger. he's so sad. Um, right, so, which of so. the following could Tiger do to help the reaction start? Let us know. Let's go, we let's go. want how many answers do we want, Johnny? Uh, we want two. We want two answers here. Yeah, we want two answers. Um, Got some shouts for one. Use a little. No, use a okay, no, four, no. It's not. It's got to be heat the reaction. And yeah. increase the pressure. And increase the two pressure. Two and four, really good. Oh, you guys should doing it now. Two and four. We love it. We love it. We were a bit hurt early on the old thing. Really dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so exactly. Those are two things that increase rates. So whenever you talk about rates, think about pressure, think about temperature, and think about a catalyst. So those are three ways that we can change the rate of a reaction, okay? Now, if we're going to get into some like more difficult stuff, we're getting to Le Chatelier. This is like... I love Le Chatelier. Oh, my God. Honey. Literally. Can we talk? talk? I think can we talk he's about Le Chatelier? Oh, is he your Patronus? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what Patronus is, but he's no, my spirit animal. I don't know where Patronus is. No. What? Harry Potter? Oh, no. yeah, sorry. Okay. There we yeah, go. Right, okay. Right, that was awkward. <laughs> so, explain why increasing the pressure will increase the production of NH3 in Tiger's experiment. You should refer to the Chatelier's principle. So, this is going to be a big hint that you need to be talking about equilibrium when you see Le Chatelier. So, increasing the pressure will increase the production of NH3. So, I'm going to take us back to the equation, take it back to the start. I'm cold playing this thingy. And if we have a look, always count the amount of gas you have on the left and the right of the equation. Now, on the left, the reactant side, we have four molecules of gas. On the right, we have two molecules of gas. So when we increase the pressure, it's going to, in, it's going to have a greater impact on the left-hand side of the equation because there's more gas. More so moles of gas. Right? More moles of gas, yes, exactly. exactly. So because we have more moles of gas on the left, when we increase the pressure, it's going to have a greater impact on the left. And Le Chatelier, he does not like change. He is happy the way he is. He's like, uh-uh, I don't like the way this is going. So I'm going to shift the equilibrium position to the right. 
um, where there's less gas to balance to like balance out the pressure and negate the effects of the change. So Le Chatelier acts to reverse the effects of change. So it's a bit like negative feedback. It's a bit yeah. like you, would, you, you want to try and make things as equal as possible all the time, right? Exactly. So if something's exothermic, it gives up heat, but if you exactly. increase the temperature, it's going Boom. to go away from the exothermic Amazing. direction. Amazing. Henry gave such a good description in the chat. That's so true. Really, really good job. It's like gong for Henry. Gong, 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 gong. for Henry. Well, gong. Henry. Someone was requesting to, to make the loudest gong we can. We will maybe do that at the end. <laughs> we, if we do it now, people will kick us out. So again, it, it sits into the right-hand side. This is because there are fewer gas molecules on the right-hand side. Amazing. So, okay, another technical term that you need to know. What is the name given to the amount of energy that particles need for the reaction to occur? Get those um, answers in. Let's hear them. I want to hear it. it. Let's there's go. two different, there's two words involved in this answer. Big, there are it's two. The, mm, mm, mm. And Lyra is straight in oh, there. I hope that's how you say your name gosh. correctly. Activation. Oh, Rhea, Matthew, Naman Naman. Polly. Amazing, amazing. It's so, the answer's coming up so quickly, I can't even so read them out, read your names because they're so quick. Okay, guys, so um, I'm gonna, we're gonna move on now and we are gonna do some um, testing substances hypercram because this is another key experiment that's gonna come up um, in your exam. Like flame tests, colors of ions, precipitates, Guaranteed to come up 100%. So, and there's so much you need to remember for exactly it. all those different flame tests. So, flame tests, I'm gonna. So, just if, if you've got a question asking to set up a flame test experiment, let's go through that set procedure and how you do the experiment. So, set, I like those nice colors as well. The colors are nice. The colors are nice. So, set, what did set stand for? Does anyone remember? First, it's step, equipment, and then terminology. So, the step. For the flame testers, you need to get a nichrome wire loop. Yes, Katie, you so said it before I even said it. Amazing. Nichrome loop, you dip that in some concentrated hydrochloric acid. Why did you do clean that? It, to yeah. clean it so there Sorry, are no impurities. Got... Yeah, well done. So that, so again, that was our step is you get the nichrome loop and the equipment is the loop and then you clean it. Um, and then the, science, the terminology that we want to use, um, we want to use um, like concentrated acid, very scientific terminology. It cleans it of any impurities, another good terminology. You then dip the loop into the sample to be tested. Another it, great bit of terminology, exactly, sample. Exactly, so that was that's the next step. Um, the equipment we need is we need a Bunsen burner um, and a blue flame. Um, and the terminology is, we've, we've been using it throughout, Bunsen burner, blue flame, all of that stuff. That's how you wanna get that five to six marks. So. Let's go through the different ones. Lithium, crimson so just, flame. Just one quick, one first quick thing point. to say is that what happens is a few people asking what a flame test is. So I just want to say, so once you've cleaned it in the high, concentrated high, hydrochloric acid, yep. you put it, you dip your nichrome loop in the sample to get mm -hmm. a little bit of that sample on the end of your nichrome loop. Yep. And then you put it in the blue flame of your Bunsen burner Perfect. and it will burn with a certain color. So you'll see all the colors here on screen yep. of some different compounds that you'll see. And you can use exactly. it to test different ions. Perfect. So lithium, for example, I like to ask burn with a crimson flame. Potassium, lilac. We love it. It's beautiful. Look oh, at that nice, cute little nice. I think I chose that. So what color was lithium? We've just said this. You'll know this. Come on. Hyper blitz. What color does lithium burn Get with? in there. Get in there, Gong. Get in come there. Come on, come on, come on. The colors do look nice. Thanks tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, so crimson, what color? Yes, crimson, yeah! Sorry, that was crimson. I love that. Crimson. That, that was like really crimson. shrill. Sorry if you're listening in headphones. Right, CA2 plus burns with an orange, orange red flame. Right? Amazing, okay. So, make a if you don't know these colors, make a list while we're going through them so you can cram them for tomorrow. Okay, potassium, what color is the potassium flame? Do we remember that one? Um, really good, um, it's lilac. Well done, nice, awesome. you made in that. Really done, Holly killed it. Copper, green flame, sodium, yellow flame. Um, keep up, oh, look at that, that was a good game. I chose that, that, that was nice, Thanks. that was nice. So, which was an orange-red flame? Can um, you remember? Do you Seeing remember some great the answers for the gong, for the lilac, that's coming up now, but I want, I want, I want now I want to know orange red. What's all the answers for orange red? Orange red. red. Calcium. Uh, Calcium. Div, phase, Holly, uh, Emily. You, uh, oh. It's all good. It's, it's Calcium, all good. not It was copper. Calcium, not Calcium. Copper. Calcium. Well done. Okay, now right. we're going to run through the tests for the different gases. Hydrogen, and this is really important you use the right terminology here. So uh, Someone mentioned this earlier. Yeah. Boom. Boom. The, the old. Squeaky pop. Squeaky pop. Boom, 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 boom. So the presence of hydrogen can be tested holding a lit spent at the open air of a test tube containing a gas. 
Um, and then if the, you make a squeaky pop. Can I try and make a squeaky pop? Yeah, go for it. Nice, that was good. Thanks, that's quite similar to what it sounds like as well. That's pretty really good. good. Yeah. I was, I, I made a revision video yesterday for the gas test. Check it out, it's linked in the bio. And my squeaky pop noise was, because I, <laughs> I panicked. Um, just in case you're wondering, that's not what a squeaky pop sounds, sounds like. like. Okay. So testing for oxygen, the presence of oxygen gas, you have to use a glowing spin, use that word glowing, and then you relight the spin. That's how we test for Way oxygen. to remember it is rags. Relights yeah. a glowing spin. Rags. Oh, I love that. Rags. Rags to riches. Yeah. So that's oxygen, the spin will relight. Then we go to, um, so to test for oxygen, remember it is that glowing splint. Um, and finally, the test for carbon dioxide, um, we bubble it through lime water and it goes, <laughs> and it goes from uh, clear colourless. and colourless to milky. milky. Sometimes it's called, um, what's the terminology? They don't just use milky, they use something else as well. I think milky is allowed on the Milky is allowed, allowed on the um, Cla cloudy is what they sometimes say. Oh my well. god, yeah. We, how could we forget yeah, chlorine? Same. Chlorine, the test for chlorine is disgusting. It just sounds so grim. Um, you have to get some damp litmus paper, um, which has come outside that one. So you've got to get some damp. Okay, chlorine comes a bit later. It's fine. You get like a damp piece of litmus paper and you put it into the um, you put it into the test into, tube into and, the it, and it blanches. Yeah, so it goes the, from red to white. Exactly. So that is what happens with litmus paper. Now we had so many requests for um, topics that it's difficult to cover all of them. So we are gonna do a nice little hyper blitz to finish off the eight minutes. This is gonna be topics from all over the specification. There's gonna be some stuff on using resources. There's None of us know what's gonna come up and that's exciting. It's exciting, it's fun, it's great. Oh bam, oh bam, are you ready? Are you guys ready? Are you pumped? Are you pumped? <sighs> It's so, I'm so ready. It's a lot. It's also really hot in here. What are the, what are the three elements found in fertilizers? Go, 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 go. go, go, go. I want to see your answers. I've got the gong ready. The gong is ready and willing. Come on. This is like 10 Three minutes. elements found in fertilizers. Let's go. Let's go. Oh my God. Oh my MPK. God. What does MPK yes. mean? What does MPK mean? You can, you'll get a periodic table. So like you can look okay, at right. uh, yeah. nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus. Amazing. Nice. Gong, gong, gong. I can't spell phosphorus. Remember, okay. don't just say MPK in your exam. You say they are. potassium, phosphorus. If you can't remember them, use the periodic table to help you. Okay, so what is what process extracts potassium chloride and potassium sulfate? Let's go. Um, come on, keep the energy up. You, I want you to feel pumped for your exam, pumped for your revision this evening, so you can go kill what you need to kill and then go into that exam and absolutely, absolutely nail awesome. it. Okay, so what is the process? I'm saying uh, some good mining. work, mining, Great. excellent. Potassium chloride and potassium sulfate can be used as fertilizers in their raw form because they are soluble sources of nice. potassium. Okay, so that is how, why they are used. Okay, four stages of a life cycle assessment. This was really requested. What are the four stages classic. of a life cycle assessment? Let's go. Um, there are four really important stages and they are gonna come up potentially in your exam tomorrow. So let us go through them. I see all of you guys getting the right answers for the last one, really, really good. Um, okay, so all good. Yes, manufacturing, production, more raw materials. Let's go through these, let's remember it. So one is acquiring the raw materials. Two, manufacturing and packaging. Three is product use. Four is product disposal. If you're having to remember that, just think of amp. It's like <laughs> um, <laughs> acquiring, um, acquiring raw materials, manufacturing and packaging, product use, and product disposal. Um, okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, what are the limitations of LCAs? This, what? Why are they good? Why are they bad? I'm going to tell you right now because we've got we've got stuff to get through. So, they involve subjective elements. So, it's based on personal judgments. I could do a life cycle assessment. Richard could do a life cycle assessment, and we could have completely different ideas about things. And often so Japanese, Japanese do, do, don't they? They like exactly. put something out there to try and make it sound like they're better than they actually are. But. Very good. Mm. And sometimes they can, they contain missing details, so a selective life cycle assessment. And sometimes that can be biased because they're like, oh no, we're not going to check this, even though they know they should. Um, so that is some limitations of life cycle assessments. Crushed it now. Absolutely it's amazing. crushed it. So We've we, already talked about we the harbor process. talked through the harbor process. I always said Haber. Um, I've but always said Harbour. Well, one of us is wrong. I don't fun. know which is which. Okay, so um, treatment of fresh water. What are the purposes of each step? So this is another good one to come up. It's a cool question because you need to know what the, what the 
steps are as well as what the purpose of them are. Exactly. First step, filtration. We've given you that one. We've filtration. That's where water passes through a mesh, mesh to remove all the solid particles. Amazing right? to remove the solid particles. And then what is the second step of um, the purification of water? What do we do next? Solid, really good coming in with those answers. We're loving it. I also love the I love it. it. Whoever put Oli in, I freaking live for that. It's so good. Um, very good. It's a sterilization of water. Really Katie White put Dollis. That's solid backwards. I know. I love... Oh, oh no, no, it's not. No, no it's not. You've got your, your eye in your eye the wrong ground. It's okay. Close. So, Close what, why do we do step two? Why is why Sterilization. Is it important? Sterilization, bro. I love it. So, it's because we add chlorine gas to kill harmful microorganisms. And how could we tell that it's chlorine gas that we added, Rich? And what would well, we do? Well, what we could do is we could put some lip litmus paper in there. And, what, and it would be bleach. It would, it would be bleach. go from red to white, wouldn't it? It would go red from red to white. And that, it's going to be damp. It's going to be some damp So paper. damp. So damp and damp. dank. Disgusting. So, what about desalination? This is the other type of water pur purification you need to know. It's a very expensive process, desalination. It is. Um, what is the first step called in the desalination of sea water? Do we remember this? Um, this is important. Very good. It's distillation. distillation. Who was that? Amazing. Jessica Richardson. You've been on it tonight. You, you've been gone. Amazing. You've been gone. So distillation is the, so we boil the sea water to create steam and then the steam condenses to give us pure water. So this produces pure, delicious, hydrating, amazing water. Oh. I could do with some water right now because I am dying in this room, honey. Oh. So step two, the second step is called reverse osmosis. Boom, oh my God, one dead pixel. Welcome back. I remember because I couldn't say your name last time. I just, I nailed is it, it not one D, four D pixel? Hey, Richard, <laughs> leave me alone. It's been a long day. I've been really busy. <laughs> um, so the second step is reverse osmosis. And so seawater passes through a what, what kind of membrane? What kind of membrane? Oh, oh it's selective. Selectively selective membrane, membrane that boom, allows boom, only boom, water boom. molecules through. Quick tip, don't say like, some people say like um, semi-permeable membrane. Mm. Don't say that, selectively permeable. Partially is also fine. Don't. I would avoid saying semi-permeable. Okay, I can see some people yeah, saying... Yeah, lots of things, semi permeable and particle, but selective, selective membrane that's... is more accurate yes. and you're more likely to get the marks. That is the gold yeah. standard mark. So make, please, please do it, do it for me. Think of little Jono and little Richard in the exam when you're writing semi-permeable. You're like, no, selectively. I remember that. You're welcome. So next, a chemically pure substance is a single element or compound. It contains only a one substance. Just the one. You can work out how pure a substance is by looking at the melting and boiling points of samples. Yes, did you know that, Jono? I did. And pure samples, <laughs> pure samples have exact and specific melting and boiling points. <laughs> specific. As, uh, as impurities lower the melting and boiling points. Uh, melting points and increase the range of temperatures at which the sample will melt. Okay? okay, so you're looking for if you want something really, really pure, but really accurately on the money. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. So pure, just one substance. One it's just one. Know? It's alone. It's so alone. So, oh, so <laughs> such a sad case. <laughs> okay, what can you measure to check the purity of substances? Two things. Get them in there. I've literally what just told oh you. God. Can you remember them? Oh my them? god. Oh my god. I think Emily's so already answered. mentioned it. People oh, have already answered know, this. I am just so impressed. I am so impressed with everybody right now. It is the melting point and it is the boiling point. Um, you guys are nailing this. And no one is alone in this room. All inclusive. All welcome. It's fun. Welcome to this room if you're just Well ready. done, loads of gong action there. Get the gong in there, Johnny. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I don't think you're ready. I'm ready for this. Bam. Are you ready? So, what about formulations? Their formulations and other mixtures can be separated into their different components by a process of chromatography. Oh, we love that. Okay, which of these is a strong oxidizing agent? Hit me up, what is this? Let's go. Which one of those is a strong oxidizing agent? We are gongien, gongiendo, loving the reference to gongiendo from the Spanish live streams, living. Um, people are saying um, two very good hydrogen peroxide is a strong Love it. oxidizing agent. Gongiendo. Gongiendo. Si, sí, estamos listo, estamos pasando bien, me encanta, I'll stop speaking Spanish. So what is the functional group of a carboxylic acid? We're getting to the last questions now, guys, so let's go. Holly! Oh, I've never seen oh anyone so God. quick off the mark with fire, a clue. Fire. Oh. So that right, is, Jono, we might be out of time. We're we're one, out of time. What, two more questions. Okay, we're going to squeeze in questions, two more questions. Two more questions, and then we really have to go. You guys are doing so good. We want to stay longer, but we only have half an hour for these. 
Um, so, what will be producing the reaction that occurs between propanic acid and sodium carbonate? There's got, I'm looking for three products. I'm looking for three things. Very good, we're straight in there with CO2. Carbon dioxide is one of them. What else are we gonna make? Good job, Lyra, I might be saying sodium that Sodium pro propanoate. Very good, that's nice. gonna be the, oh, they want the proper name. Yeah, sodium, sodium pro propanate. Pro Johnny, you gotta be specific, nice. otherwise you're not gonna get the marks in your exam. Well, exactly, see, you're welcome. And water, really good. Nice. And if you have to describe, you might get us to describe what is happening in this reaction. You would see some effervescence or bubbling of gas. So that's because of CO2. And for those of you who didn't know the answer, we got if we got salt and a carbonate, it produces a salt. Yep. Sorry, if you've got acid and a carbonate and uh -huh. you react them together, you it produces a salt, yep. a carbon dioxide, and water. Yep, amazing, amazing. Okay. Last question. Last question, let's go. And it's an equilibrium question. And it's a long one. <laughs> let's just talk, should we talk to Let's talk to it. So increasing the pressure will shift the equilibrium to the right. Now I'm gonna tell you why. It's because shifting the reaction equilibrium to the right would increase how much SO3 is present. Because we look, we have three moles of gas on the left and two on the right. So pressure is gonna shift that equilibrium to the right, to just like in the Haber process. Moles. Oh my God. So the equilibrium would shift to the right because increasing the pressure would push the equilibrium to the side with fewer gas molecules. The number of gas on the left-hand side is three compared to two on the right. So always just count out how many molecules there are on each side. Very good. So we're gonna have to wrap it up there. I'm really that sorry. That is all we're gonna do. Let's just, give the people what they want. What they want. Give the people what they Where want. Where is the like proper hitter for I the don't know, we lost it. We've lost um, the proper hitter. Let's do like, like, hold on, I'll do like a little like headbutt. Ah, yeah, I can headbutt it if you want. Okay, guys, you've done so good today. I just headbutted the gong. <laughs> You're welcome. I've also had a busy day. I think I needed that. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us for this live stream. If you need some more chemistry prep, there are some videos in the bio that go over all you need to know for organic chemistry and chemical analysis. So please check those out. Um, if you head over to the Senegal website now, there's a free smart learning trial to get your revision even more efficient. Um, and look, we're back with more of these this week, so please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and keep coming back. We love doing these streams and we want to continue them. Check but out our podcasts as well. Yeah. As we do them the night before your exam. Um, also, we're going to set another another opportunity to go on to Rabbit if you want to go on to that and, yeah. and have a go yourselves. I'll put the link on in approximately three seconds when One, I get screen. it up. I'll stop sharing the screen and we'll send you that link. Um, and again, this has been, these are, so, these are like the highlight of my day. So thank you so much um, for allowing us to be able to do these streams. It's so much fun. And I hope they're useful. We're trying to make them more structured and listen to feedback. So keep on giving us feedback. Let us know how to make them as useful as we can for you guys. Um, so great, head on over to Robert if you want. Otherwise, go into Seneca, go through these units, check out the videos below. We're trying to give, we're trying to please every kind of learner. We want to do visual learning, we want to do audio learning, we want to do um, reading learning. So we've got you covered, guys. Get um, on, get on rabbit guys, get chatting, get working, and good luck tomorrow. Best of luck We're tomorrow. rooting for you. We're, you've got this, best of luck, and we will see you in the next live stream. Bye guys. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Bye.